Oh, yeah. They're over there spreading the gospel, all right? No, they're spreading something else. So please, I need you to pray. If you want to, you can go to their, uh, you see right there, you should see that on the, let me move the banner out of the way for a moment. Oh, you see there on the screen, uh, the contact information, if you would like to give them, send them something directly. I have done that. I'm not going to ask you to do anything I haven't done. I sent them a love offer about two weeks ago, about a week and a half ago. Two, they're straight directly to them. He picked it up. It's all electronic. You got to go to the Western Union store and everything. And I put a love seat there to help them to pay their lawyers and their court costs. These people are fighting for their own stuff. Now, why do you say, why, why are you saying that uh, that way, Carpenter? I'm going to tell you why. I'm glad you asked. One moment here, because I'm going to pull something else up here now. Watch this, watch this, watch this. I hope you're ready, because we, we're going in today. We're going in today. You know, there is a there is a saying, if you will. Here it is right here that I posted the other day as well. In the mob, in the mafia, organized crime in American politics, they love to promote compromised men. Why? That's so they can control them totally. Do y'all remember a man named Dennis Hastert used to be the Speaker of the House. He was out of Illinois. Remember him? He was Speaker of the House for quite a little while there. Well, the reason why he came almost out of nowhere because he was compromised. Dennis used to mess with the little boys and was paying them off. And they knew that, but they promoted him so that he would do what they wanted him to do. And the mob, the mafia, the organized crime policy happens every day. What are you saying? I'm saying that there's some of the gentlemen on the Council of 18 and they made the executive committee as well that are compromised, and that's how they got on there. One so much that is compromised is Anthony Pelton. We'll get to that in just a second. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Now, let's continue. Let's continue. Now, for those of you who want proof, about Mr. Pelt. There it is right there. Go to mypalmbeachclerk.com. I'm not doxing anyone. This is all public record. Search for Anthony T. Pelt. And every case that he's done since about 2017, you will see against Maurice Roberts and others, but mainly Maurice Roberts, where he has been trying to sue them unsuccessfully since 2017 for the church property. Why? Because the church is three and a half miles or so from Donald Trump's house. So, of course, there's a lot of, um, you know, value there, much more than it already was. The church was started in 1919. It's 2022. They have not had one moment's problem with their, with their, with the pastor and the property and the deeds and the air rights and this and that and other in 103 years until this knucklehead came along. So what does that tell you? Okay, let's go a little further. Let's go a little further. Let's go a little further. We hit it all today. So you're saying, well, Pastor Robert, what is going on? Well, here's here's the first thing. I'm not going to cover it all tonight, but we're going to hit some of it. You see this letter right here? This is a letter written on July 6, 2018, which, by the way, is the same weekend that the Palm Beach Post did a front page story about this debacle that he started. But it says here, uh, where he's uh, putting uh, Anthony Pelt is excommunicating and disfellowshipping Deacon Maurice Roberts from the Church of God. Doesn't say why, doesn't say anything, just you're gone, you're out of here. Okay? Let's go a little further. Let's go a little further. Because then, August 26, 24, 2018, just a mere month and a half later, uh, Tim Hill, Timothy Mark Hill, lying Timmy, wrote them a letter. Basically saying your appeal, which has gone before the second committee, and you cannot. Now you got something, you cannot be a part of Church of God anymore, which is a joke because they have still go to church. Even the pastor there said they haven't put him out. Even the deacon say that. So I don't know where. And again, there's no reference of why they're put out. We well, you know why. They want that property, they want that money, because that's what the Church of God does all over the world. They're grifters all over the world, Craig. They're all over the world, Craig. But listen. So here it is. We see this letter here. Now, you see that? Now, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Because he's always talking about everybody lying on him. Timmy, no one's lying. That's your signature. 
Now, let somebody forge your signature, then Anthony's the one, because this is off the actual papers that Anthony filed in the lawsuit where he's the plaintiff. By the way, he says he's been telling everybody he's not the plaintiff, that they were suing him. Uh, no, he's suing them. He's the plaintiff. They've been defending the whole time. Okay? Okay. That's another lie. Another lie. Another lie. By the way, just in case you don't know who Anthony Pelt is, that's the Council of 18 member. That's the overseer of Florida Coco. Okay. That's enough of that. And we all know, we all know Timmy. We all know Timmy. There's a reason why Timmy has the taper on his mouth. It's symbolic. He's compromised to y'all. <clears throat> Allegedly. All right. Let's go a little further. Let's go a little further. Huh. Speaking of, speaking of, <laughs> Y'all see that right there? But that's not what we're talking about tonight. We're talking about clowns in the church. Talking about clowns in the church. But here we go. Here we go. Now let's go a little further. Congratulations to the newly elected members of the Council of 18 of the Church of God, Cleveland, Tennessee. We see Clint here, R.C. Hugh Nelson. We see the man that started it all, got on first years ago, Dr. Wallace J. Sibley, my great friend and father in the gospel. Then we see to the far right, Bill Lee, uh, uh, good friend and also by the way, by the way, by the way, by the way, let me just let me just let me just move this over here for a second. Because I, I need to address something here. I need to address something here. Let me address something here. Okay. It, this has been going on since 2017. Anthony has been after these people's property. Okay? This church has been in existence since 1919. And no, they've never had a problem with anybody trying to have a problem with it, you know, take the property, sell it, mortgage it, whatever he's trying to do. Never had a problem until Anthony Pelt coming off. What does that tell you? Bad leadership. But now, what bothers me the most, and every once in a while I get a reminder because Fifth Street Church of God is not some random church in West Palm Beach out there by itself. It's the mother church of that area. Okay, my former pastor when I was growing up, Bishop S.T. Grant, and Sister Renita Grant, who just passed uh, not too long ago, my, uh, you know, is, was a member there, long time member. He was my pastor until I knew myself, until I was 12, until Bishop Hutchinson came. He, that's his church. This church has been around a long time. But you would think that it's sitting on an island over on Palm Beach by itself because none of the other churches on the district, I haven't heard a peep, peep, hadn't heard a peep. <clears throat> hadn't heard a peep. Look here, from the district overseer, the district overseer, Oscar Lewis. Oscar. No? Oscar. You the district overseer. I haven't heard you say a thing. This is where the church is in your district. But then you post, welcome back. Welcome back, Carter. North Palm Beach District Pastors, Anthony Mensapel. Well, wonderful. Praise God. Have you all been called Mother Roberts then? Oscar, Diane? Y'all are great people. I have no beef with you. How can you sit there and watch this happening? This man committing highway robbery. And y'all, oh, I guess you're not going to say that, no, Oscar, because you don't want to lose your district overseership. Is that what it is? Because we know that Anthony likes to intimidate people and rule people out fear. I hope that's not the case. I hope to God that's not the case. But it seemed like it, y'all. It seemed like it. Well, let's go a little further. Years ago, he died when I was a little boy. The name called him Babe Michael. Reverend W. M. Michael. He had so much sugar, Pastor. He, he had so much sugar in, in his voice that you could almost get diabetes listening to him. That Negro had some kind of tune. Mm -hmm. Lord, he could tune it, brother. But you know what I heard his wife say? His wife said that my husband, babe, lived the life. She said when he first started preaching, said he could rock a house. God gave him that kind of vocal gift, that vocality. And uh, she said, but when he first started preaching, he said, babe, didn't know what he's talking about. Said, have Moses in the lion's den and <laughs> Daniel crossing the Red Sea. 
But here is what she said. When I sent Babe to school to get him a few courses here and there, and when that boy finally put Moses where he was supposed to be, and Daniel where he was supposed to be, so that boy rocked the house. But here's what she said. She said, but his life held me. There was no discombobulation between the ecclesiastical and the domestic. You can't preach over your life. That's the devil telling you that. We had a preacher once, used to be moderator down in Florida where I grew up. He could preach too. Ugly, God, my. But he could preach until he would look better. Now, 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 now. God knows that's the truth. You would see him almost uh, be become metaphorically transform. Preach. But his rascalities sometimes got in the way. And I heard him say to me, March of 1982, he said, my boy, I want you to do me a favor. I said, well, what is that? I thought he was going to invite me to preach something. He said, promise me that you'll keep your life up. He said, with the gifts that God has given you, and you finish seminary and college and everything, your training. He said, don't let the law down in your behavior. He said, I messed up a lot when I was young. Of course, the devil had me fooled that I could preach over stuff. I could preach over it. Preach over it, preach over it. I remember one Sunday his enemies had all of his furniture out on the church lawn trying to put him out. He went inside the sanctuary and it took all his office furniture out, had the cops out there on the lawn. He drove up, had a 1958 Buick Roadmaster. He drove up and I watched him because I was, I was a member of the church across the railroad. He got out, had on a white J.B. Stetson hat, white Stacey Adams, white three-piece suit and a white overcoat across his arm. Palm Sunday, 1958. And he always preached in the afternoon on WTMC radio station, a delayed broadcast. He preached that Sunday evening, what evil has he done? Talking about Pilate. What evil has he done? And I, did, I tell you, too, folk, Dr. Saucer were getting happy in their houses. You'd hear them radios blasting on the area where I lived in Ocala, Tucker Hill. Them folk were shouting in their houses. He was a preaching poor man. Ugly, but boy, he could preach my God. But here's what he told me. Keep your life up. You can't preach over sin. That's what Macbeth says in Shakespeare. Shall all of Neptune's ocean Wash this blood from my hands. No, sir. Water won't take care of sin. You need blood for that. Water is good for the skin. Live a godly life. And the last words I heard from this preacher... He says, I got it straight with God now and I'm heading to the roundhouse. He died five months later. But he quoted a hymn for me. Must I to the judgment be brought to answer in that day for every vain and idle thought and every word I say? Surely every secret of my heart shall shortly be made known and I will receive my justice for all that I have done. How careful then ought I to live with what religious fear? Oh, what a strict account I must give for my behavior here. 
five months later, he was dead. That was a powerful, powerful, powerful word there. But Dr. the late Dr. Matt King Carter, you can't preach over your life. Anthony, you can't preach over this stuff. How can you preach every Sunday saying you're leading the churches of God and you're suing what of the churches you're supposed to be spiritually covering? If that's not a travesty and lots of moronic thing I've ever seen, I, I've never seen anything like it. You have got to know. There's got to be something down on the inside of you that's saying something, something's wrong, something's wrong. When you've got the Holy Ghost inside of you, even when your pride wants to say something, you'll fix it. No, while we were while they were voting you on the Council of 18 in the General Assembly, you had your attorneys try to serve the Saints of History some more. The date said July 26, 2022. Boy, you low down and you prideful. You up this filing, <laughs> and you know what you're doing. Come on, man. You've been doing this since 2017. What are you obsessed with here? But here's what I here's what I think. Number one, let's go back, let's review. Timmy, no one's lying on you. We showed you just a little documentation. On our next broadcast, we're gonna show you down in Mexico City. Yeah, I got it. I got it all in Spanish. There's a church. In Mexico City, a church of God, where they sold the property without the church's consent. And the men that sold the property, three men, they called them down there, they called them the three amigos. In a suburb of Mexico City, they built three houses. They're worth two hundred between two and three hundred thousand dollars in Mexico City, which means they're probably million dollar houses here easily. Yes, they built them, and one of those men got voted on the Council of 18 last week in the Journal of Sydney. Oh, I'm giving, I got the receipts. I got the letter, and the church wrote Tim Hill, just like Fifth Street did, just like those in Zambia did, just like others did, and they ignored it, did not even respond. And that man now is on the Council of 18, along with Eric and Anthony. So don't sit there and tell me, oh, they put people on. They put people on and leadership that are compromised and they can control them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's all coming out. I got calls not coming from Bulgaria. I got calls not coming from other parts of Africa. I got calls coming from all over the world. People are just glad that somebody is speaking out and not afraid. It ain't me. Mother Roberts, Sister Julia, I didn't choose this. But somehow we end up on this course together and I ain't going nowhere. Oh, bless your name. Oh, Lord. Hey, bless, help me, Lord. But let me tell you something. Let's review. Bishop Oscar Lewis, District Overseer over Fifth Street. I can't hear you. Sister Diane, you're a sweet woman. You're a sweet woman. God knows you are. I can't hear y'all. Huh? Bishop Daryl Hepburn, lead graduate. Bishop Cecil Hepburn. Lee graduate. I can't hear y'all. Y'all are 10 miles down the road in fact from 5th Street Church of God. And Cleveland helped y'all with that. It was reported to me. So if they try to take something that they have not bested one diamond in 103 years, what you think they'll do to Blue Hair Church of God if they want that property? That's prime property. Man, you're on Blue Hair Boulevard. I need somebody, while I'm thinking about it, I need somebody to confirm with me. What happened to the Church of God on 4th Avenue West and Fort Lauderdale? Church of God at 4th Avenue near Andrews. And somebody went there today, and I'm just going to get, I'm going to get a picture of it. They went by, the, they actually just happened upon it, like things always happen. And the church was boarded up. Diane Mann used to pastor. She used to pastor. Her father used to pastor. This she, but she's in Orlando now. What happened to that church? It's all boarded up and fenced up. Is that another property church got their souls? Are trying to sell? How in the world can you be in the last days, the end times, and sit up here and instead of winning souls, you talk about the Great Commission. Oh, Lord. You talk about the Great Commission. You want to fulfill the Great Commission, but I wonder if you want a big commission. Oh, yeah, money, 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 money. Oh, bless his name. You got to understand something here. You got to stop every time 
I think, of the goodness of the Lord. Every time I think about the end times, every time I think about what I see going on in the world, I see the big bear, Russia, is kicking up in Ukraine. I see China is kicking up all over the world. I see things happening. Earthquakes in diverse places. I see a food shortage, a baby formula shortage. I see an oil shortage. Gas is high. Food is high. People are starving. People are dying all over the world. And oh, 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 the church of God, Cleveland, Tennessee, seems to be worried about its money, seems to be worried about property. I want to know every time, every time, every time I see that time is winding up. I get a quickening in my spirit. I get a quickening in my spirit. I want to share the gospel of Jesus to anybody I can. Because time is winding up. My spirit knows that time is winding up. And there's an end time revival that's got to be had before Jesus cracks the sky. So if you got the Holy Ghost down in you, if you believe the Bible, I believe. If you serve the good Savior, how can you put people out of the church? How can you sell people's property? This ought to be the time that you ought to be sending churches money, not them sending you money. This ought to be the time that you ought to be rebuilding churches. This ought to be the time that you ought to be planting ought to be planting churches all over the world. But no, 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 no. You ain't worried about planting souls or planting churches. You worried about planting money in your deep pockets. But I'm here to tell you, your pockets got holes in them. You're not going to be blessed. It's a curse that you put out those 29 churches over in Zambia. You're cursed because you're putting churches out. You're trying to sell churches' property. The old man J.T. Robinson, way back in the 50s, did the same thing was going around to the colored work, mortgaging the church's property and taking the money and leaving the bills for the church to pay. That's what was reported to me down through the years. But I want you to know I don't have to turn red as a beat like Tim Hill. I don't have to lock, joke it off of like every pelt likes to do them. But time, time is winding up. Time, time is winding up. It's winding up. You better get right. You better get right with God. From the top of the Church of God, down the executive committee, you better get right. You better get right. They will stay overseer, every field representative. And oh, we're going to talk about that bridge builders too. You better get right because time is winding up. And the judgment of God begins in the house of God. Oh, bless his name. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you some time is winding up. Oh, bless his name. Oh, Jesus. Have mercy. You better get it right. You better get it right. Church of God, if you mean what you're saying, you say what you mean. Drop the lawsuits. Drop the lawsuit in Zambia. You got time. Peter Thomas, drop the lawsuit in Zambia. Give those 29 churches their churches back, their property back. If you really mean what you say you mean, come on, Anthony, drop the lawsuit that you found against the Church of God. Fifth Street. If you mean what you say. If you mean what you say, go to Mother Roberts and tell I'm sorry for saying you got a mouth like a cesspool, a woman old enough to be your mama. Huh? If you really, 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 really want to get it right, take the high road. 
Michelle Obama said, when they go low, we go high. They didn't go high. You went low and you're going lower. Come on here. It's a disgrace. It's a disgrace. It's a disgrace and a shame. I'll tell you what. God is sitting there. He's sitting there and he's, he's, sitting out and he's looking and he knows. <laughs> oh, bless his name. He knows. Listen. I got to go. My time is up. We're going to continue this. Tonight, Wednesday, tomorrow night, we may do a late night. You see, I'm getting my voice back from this size of this. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you so much. I could not do this last night. I got more receipts, y'all. I've got a letter, the actual letter, the churches in Mexico City sent to general headquarters that got summarily ignored. Man, come on. This is a joke. This is a joke. It's a game. It's a game. But, <clears throat> all right, just got me some intel. I'm going to say that for our next broadcast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So that's one thing about it. <laughs> all you got to do is put it out there. Somebody going to find information. Thank you, every single one of you. If you want to be a blessing to what we're doing, you can send a love offering. You can do all that. I'm not going to belabor the issue. You can contact me. You can send it. PayPal is Rob Carbon the II. If you uh, want to send it, uh, it's Cash App, uh, you can send it at, at Rob Carbon the Two. And now, even you can do the RCTV Networks with an S. Also, if you're on Venmo, at Rob Carbon the Two. However, you want to be a blessing, you can be a blessing. We got a lot to do. And I'll tell you what, we're not backing down. I, somebody told me they put the private investigator on me. That's good. Come on. Come on. I, and, and they can't sue me. They can't sue me, but I don't know if they're going to sue me for But tell the truth, everything I'm saying is source documents. For those of you interested, <coughs> excuse me, go to mypalmbeachclerk.com. So it's Anthony T. Pelt. You'll see it all there for yourself. All the stuff he filed. And so, also, it's the end times, y'all. You better get ready. Uh, it's going to get worse before it gets better. And so you want to watch this little commercial here we're gonna, before we go. And everything, but I want you. I want to pray. Let me let me pray before I do the commercial. Let me pray, Father. I thank you right now. Thank you for giving me the energy. Thank you for giving me the fortitude. Thank you for all those brothers and sisters, even my brothers there in Cleveland, uh, 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 that are, are are praying with us and working with us, and even those all over the world that are sitting intel and sending information and saying thank you, Pastor Robert. God, I thank. Bless each one of them right now. Bless each one of the sound of my voice, God. Let us assisting and praying for those in Zambia and Mexico City and West Palm Beach and Blue Heron and all these other places, God. I thank you right now. God, if you be God, convict Anthony Pell, convict Tim Hill, convict all of those that are in on this, that are doing wrong. I thank you right now for the victory. Bless those and touch them and heal those who have been hurt by the church. In the name of Jesus, I thank you right now for it is done. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Give you peace. I will see you real soon. Catch you on the flip and flip. Now watch this. Carbon second, and I'm so glad that you joined me here. I have something I want to let you know. Do you see how high gas is? You see we have a baby formula shortage. We also have food that's high. Inflation is high. What is going on? Well, things may get worse before they get better, and you need to be prepared. Go to preparewithrobert.com. Go to preparewithrobert.com. Brought to you by My Pager Supply. Get emergency food kits right there for 2,000 plus calories a day. You're going to need that. It's brought to you by My Pager Supply. Go to preparewithrobert.com. Don't be left behind. Be ready now. Let's go.